Hello and welcome to my workshop. So today I'm going to build a teardrop trailer. So it's a small pull behind trailer. I have some small uh, somewhat all-terrain tires and wheels to go on there. Some metal to get started. Uh, some shafts I'll have to use to make the uh, drive shaft. And some leaf springs. Still got a little bit more to uh, get purchased. But I think this will be a good start. So let's get to it. Okay, so I took some uh, brass square tubing. I cut a notch in this, and that notch allows me to fold this up to a right angle. So this will be one half of the the frame of where the uh, camper will sit. I'll have another one of these. I'll solder it in and make sure everything is nice and square. And um, then that will give me the base where I can build off of the camper. So let's get uh, soldering this up. Okay, so I took the two individual corner pieces that were uh, notched and bent over, soldered them together, and then put, uh, I think it's called a half lap, but essentially what I did is I cut a notch into this piece of tubing to allow this piece of tubing to slip in. As I mentioned, this will be the base for the camper. I'll take the wheels next, figure out my the width I'm looking for, uh, cut these axles down, solder these two axles together and with some type of a um, a coupler on top of that and it'll just be a solid axle uh, for the um, for the suspension you know riding on leaf springs so I think that's the next step so let's see if we can figure that out Okay, finished up with the frame, got the holes drilled and the uh, leaf spring um, mounted. The wheels are just using these uh, shafts, which were, you know, off of the rear. Uh, I've cut the tang off and I still got to cut uh, about seven millimeters off. But what I have is a roll pin, like a steel roll pin, and it just happens to slip right over that. So I'll put these two together and silver solder this together and this will then be, you know, one one drive shaft that, that goes together that will then get mounted here. So uh, let me uh, get these shortened up, uh, cleaned up a little bit more, and uh, we'll get these soldered together and see if we can get them mounted up to the, uh, to the chassis somehow.
All right, so I'm uh, making some uh, really good progress on getting this teardrop trader completed. The um, the sides uh, are done. One side has a door opening. Uh, there will be a hinge door that slips into there. The other side just has an opening for a window. I'm starting to work on the uh, kitchen area, I guess, is the spot in the back. Um, this will have a hinge door, so it'll be completely covered up to here and glued in place and there will be a hinge door from here down and there will be some shelves and kind of cubby areas back in here anyway coming along really nicely making good progress um gonna focus on trying to get the rear and this portion in the front and get everything thing all closed in let's get to that okay so where we're at right now is Pretty much most of the chassis uh, part, the lower lower part of the um, of the camper is complete. I've added this tongue area on in the front, uh, just uh, you know some square tubing running out, some uh, square tubing to triangulate on the sides, and then a piece of stainless steel, a uh, really thin plate, but it's a, it ties all of these joints together, and is you know got a fair amount of silver solder holding it all together. So that should be a nice sturdy front mount for this the uh the main body of the camper i went ahead and painted the inside because uh, it's going to be pretty much impossible to do after it's done i've also placed in some foam to kind of represent you know some type of a flooring in there and the next i'll have to do is to put the skin on also want to put some type of a shelving and cubby system in the back uh, it's going to be, you know, very simple. I'm not going to get too too overly complicated, but um, a couple little trick things, but nothing nothing major. Uh, and then, you know, you, you simply bolt this together and get the, the axles on, and then that'll be it. So, uh, a little bit more to go, but making good progress, so let's get to that. Okay, so I've gone through a couple different uh, tests to see what would work the best for this uh, this pillow block bearing that I'm making, and I think I've come up with a solution for this. So, just to remind what we have is a a flange bearing, so it's regular uh, regular bearing, but on one side I would have a flange, and what that does is it keeps from pushing all the way through. So you have a hole that's drilled out that allows the the bearing to slip in. So what I ended up using was a uh, 10 millimeter uh, drill bit to get a hole for this bearing to slip in and the flange catches it on one side. And the material that I was able to get is a little bit thick. So what I'm having to do is recess and put a pocket in here. And so I've tried a couple different size drill bits but I end up with this massive drill bit here and so a lot of these holes are kind of messy but like I said these are just trials so essentially if I drill this out to a depth leaving you know about five millimeters uh, of thickness in the bottom and then finish drilling it out with this 10 millimeter drill bit I can clean up both sides and slip the bearing in from the back side and then that pushes on 
over the end of the shaft. And because the shaft has that notch in it, it slides up against and the shaft can't come out. And, you know, obviously if you bone on both sides, then you'll take a pen, put a pen in, and a, um, a hex, and then the wheel will go on. So what that will allow, allow you to do is to have a portion of the top where I can then tap and drill two holes. And that will come over to a little piece of, uh, of steel. I'll solder that piece of steel up to this brass tubing that would be lined up, which will end up covering up and becoming essentially the axle. And I'll be on one on the other side. And then so you'll have a tube soldered to a piece of metal that has two holes drilled in it that lines up with the two pillow blocks on each end. All right, so I have the uh, camper all finished up. It's uh, gonna be ready to get shipped out pretty soon. So um, what I ended up with is, uh, you know, functioning doors uh, that should put the glass in, the turn around in the back, the rear hatch opens up and that reveals like a kitchen type area. So, it's got a little bit of a wood wood top here and some storage units and shelves and stuff. Pretty typical of what you would see. Uh, around on this side is another window. I have a uh, you know leaf sprung functioning suspension. Actually works pretty well with a custom uh, axle that I made. So it's basically a two rear um, SCX10 axles uh, soldered together in the middle. With a tube and I made a uh, bearing carrier out of aluminum that's bolted to each end and then that piece is then bolted to the leaf spring. So the front is designed to hook onto one of the uh, axial SCX10 style hitches and so it just pops onto there and then allows it to swivel around. Uh, it should work fairly fairly well. Like I said it, it's not um, anything fancy but like I said it should hold up just fine. I uh, didn't have uh, a ton of time to, to complete this. This was for uh, a giveaway that I'm helping out a uh, Michigan G6. 
and I had roughly a week to get this done. So there's a lot more I would love to have done, a lot more details I would love to put on it, but this is pretty much all I could get done on the, the project. So pretty, still pretty happy with that. And uh, hopefully uh, everybody will like what we what I've made. All in all, very happy with the camper. Um, you know, there's like usual, always a ton of things I'd do differently. But I think for not having a whole lot of time and not doing a whole lot of research on it, I think it turned out pretty well. So looking forward to getting on to the uh, next project I got going on. And until then, we'll see you in the rocks. Yeah.